just said, David said that. David said it. And David was speaking in the first person, right? <laughs> yes. So the, the, about Christ, so was that, did that happen to David? No. So the, you can apply that with Zechariah 12, because. Zechariah wasn't speaking in the first person. But the Most High was speaking, but like he said, it's broke prophetic. It's prophetic. So if point. it's prophetic, the Lord, and he just broke, hold on, if it's prophetic, and he just pulled out the Most High, can't be Christ, because we just proved that. He just said through John, John the 14th chapter, verse 45. He prove that. He that seeth me seeth him that sent me. Amen. Right. Sent me. Amen. If I send you to go to the store, am I actually you going to the store? Uh -huh. You are sent. Are you God? Been battling with these demons, yeah, I'm supposed to fight. I'm trying to see what it's like. Take me. So I roll the dice. Look up to no one else, but your house shy. I got real power. Hebrew is a lie. Eight and verse one. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Brother, if the people on this side listen very closely and diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God, what's going to happen? To observe and to do all his commandments. All his commands. Read on. Which I command thee this day. Right. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. No, we're going to be paying taxes as American citizens. Above oh, all nations oh, of the oh, earth. 400 years of slavery. Oh, above oh, all oh, nations oh, of the earth. The Lord said if we kept his commandments, I mean, look at us. We already, genetically, we are the best people on the face of the earth. Right. But why don't we have that rulership in this society? Because we broke the commands of God. I mean, if the Lord said love your neighbors, you love yourself. But we over here shooting each other and killing each other. That's, yeah, gang banging and, and you know, raping and, raping and robbing our women and doing all these different things. And guess what? We're not going to be set above all nations of the earth. We're going to be the lowest nation of the earth. Go to Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. And so, brother, now we depend on these nations for our survival, man. When it was never supposed to be so. Who you got? Lamentations chapter 4 and verse number 17. Bring it out. As for us, our eyes has yet filled for our vain help. What? Our eyes have yet filled for our vain help. But you know, depending on the American dollar in 2024 is a vain help. It's not gonna help you. This dollar is coming to a crash. The American dollar is not backed by gold. It's not backed by petrol oil anymore, man. These nations are leaving America as we speak, and you have our people wanting to look at a silver bean all day. World War III is born right now in the earth. There's about to be a big strike October 1st where the American government is gonna lose five billion dollars a day. A day! A day! But these are the things that our people are doing, read on. We're, this is a vain help, read on. And now watch you. We have watched for a nation. We have yeah, watched for a nation. We are watching for a nation that can what? They cannot save us. No, vote for President Trump. They, they cannot can save us. Vote for Joe Biden. They, they cannot, cannot save, save us. These people can't save you. I know. We still depending on a Roman emperor to save us. Right. We still depending on Nero. We still dependent on Trump. We still depend. I mean, there are Roman emperors all over again, man. We still dependent on these men, these white men to help us. The Lord said, this nation cannot save you. Now, go to Sirach chapter 13 and verse 14. Or maybe 14 or 13. But read 13 and 14 first. Let's see who can save us. Read this. Sirach chapter 13 and verse 14. Who can save us? Love the Lord right. all thy life right. and call upon him and, do what? and, and call, call upon, upon him call upon America. and call, call upon, upon him right. for thy salvation. For, what? for thy salvation. The Lord said call upon him for our salvation. Now, brother, I'm going to ask you, how many really, how, I mean, realistically, how many of our people really call upon God for salvation? They don't, brother. They call upon their money. They call upon their mom. They call upon their dad, but who really calls upon the God of the, that created heaven and earth for our salvation? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. Uh, it's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. Bring it Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord. Is the what? Is, is the, the Lord. Lord. The heaven, the heavens of heavens is the Lord. Read on. Is the Lord's thy God. The earth also with all that therein is. With what? With all that therein is. Right. Only Yahweh had delight in thy fathers. And guess what? Only the most high delight in our fathers, but everything in this world, everything in the sky, the heavens of heavens, everything belongs to the Lord. So the, if the Lord told you live your life a certain way, 
then guess what? If we live our life a certain way, we'll get lifted up out of this captivity. But the first step, brother, is to understand who we are. Because like I said earlier, we're not black, we're not African-American. I'm gonna ask you, what did God call us as a nation? He created everybody, right? Did he say, okay, those are black people? And he turned around and he said, okay, let's create something else. No, he didn't do that. So what did the Lord call us as a nation? Huh? You said what? You don't know too much, right? It's okay. A lot of us didn't know too much. But now that we're now that we understand this information, now we're here to teach you, brother. Go to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 4. Now we're here to give you some knowledge, brother. Go to the book of Sirach, chapter 24 and 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1. And verse That's why we out here, brothers, to teach our brothers that don't know too much, that's willing to learn and be humble so we can increase the greatness. It reads to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge. To the young man, knowledge. We out here to give knowledge to our young men out here. Now read this. Sirach 24 and 23. God, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 24 and verse number 23. It, it reads, so like you. verse 23, all these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God. Right. Even the law which Moses commanded for inheritance. For what? For, for inheritance. inheritance. So the laws of God is what our people are commanded for inheritance. And like I said, we out here to give that knowledge to our people. So now how, how do we know that we are the Jews or the Israelites? Because that's what we claim to be. But how do we know that? Let's go to Deuteronomy. Do you know God has set up thousands of years ago signs and wonders to prove who his chosen people will be in the last days because he knew that they wouldn't know who they were uh, because they went into multiple slaveries? Now I'm going to show you in the Bible. Go to Deuteronomy 20 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if we didn't listen to God. Now this is the flip side of that contract. We read, we told you earlier, the Lord said he would set thee on high above all nations. But let's say we don't listen to the Most High God. You listening, brother? Remember this is 5,000 years ago. Read on. To observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, that all, the what? That that all, all these, these curses, curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God said, if you break my contract, you know what? I'm not going to put you in jail. I'm not the so-called white man. I'm not just going to kill you. I'm going to put generational curses upon you and your children forever. That's what the Lord did. And now look, and look at how we live in. Would you say we're a cursed people or we're blessed? Sometimes we're blessed. Why? Because our, our you no, know, we didn't die at 25, or you know, we got we got money in our pocket a little bit. I mean, the Lord said a blessing is being set above every nation on earth. But the Lord said He's gonna put generational curses on us. I'll say the way we live, brother, we not blessed, we curse, brother. All right. You from Chicago? What happens if you go a little bit south of the city? What does it turn into? Does it turn into a blessing or a curse? Curse. What about the west side? It's dangerous. Dang. Seems, it seems cursed to me. Did you know that was a curse in the Bible? That we're going to be cursed in the cities? Read this, King, verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Damn, that was the next verse. We're going to be cursed in the cities. And you already said to yourself that, guess what? We already live in south side of Chicago, west side of Chicago. It's dangerous. The next curse, the first curse was the Lord said, you're going to be cursed in the cities. Read on. And curse shalt thou be in the field. And what? And, and curse, curse shalt thou, thou be in the field. field. And curse shalt thou be in the field. Yeah, so we ought to understand that, brother. These are the curses that fell upon our people. That we are the Israelites according to the Bible. We are these people in this sign because we fit these curses. What's going on, brother? How you doing, brother? Right? You understand that, King? You got any questions? Now, what do we need to do as the Israelites? What's going on, King? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me finish dealing with him and I got you, brother. Now, what are we supposed to be doing as the Israelites? Huh? Breaking a curse, but how though? If these curses are on us because we broke the commandments, what are we? What do we have to do to get these curses off us? Huh? Pray more, but pray for what? Peace. Now, if we broke the if we broke the commandments of God, and now we're cursed, how do we get out of this? We have to keep the what? The commandments of God, right? right. We got to reverse those curses by doing what we need to do in the first place. Right. What are some commandments? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three commandments. Yeah. What are three commandments? I got you. Go to Deuteronomy. That's why we out here, brother. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse eight. 
Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 14 and verse number 8. Leviticus 26 and 26. And the swine. And the what? And, and the, the swine. swine. No, swine is, swine is pig. And the pig. Now, God, these are dietary laws. As God's chosen people, surely you can't live like everybody on the earth. Right. You, you can't live like everybody. You're held to a higher standard. Right. If I've seen the CEO of McDonald's, is he going to be moving like a worker? No. No, he's going to be moving different because right. he's he's in a, he, his image is different. Right. So God said our image are, is different from these other nations. And he knows that. That's why the Lord had him put his thumbs up. Right. So now we have to understand that there's a dietary law on what we can and what we cannot eat. Right. So God is about to give specific directions on the pig. Read on. And the swine. Right. Go and divide the hook. Slut. Right. Go and divide the hook. Yeah, true of not to cut. Right. It is unclean unto you. Him is good. It, it is, is unclean, unclean unto, unto you. you. Wait till it, it is, is unclean, unclean unto, unto you. you. So pig is an unclean yeah, thing. What Genesis nine nine Genesis nine verse four says. I got you. We're gonna read that right after this. Right. So read on. Oh, you understand pig is unclean, right? Ye shall not eat of their flesh, right. nor right. touch their dead carcass. Right. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. So God gives specific directions on what you can't eat that's in the waters and what you cannot eat. Read on. All that have fins and scales, right. and the waters, the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. The Lord say, them shall ye eat. So fish that has fins and scales, you are allowed to eat. The fish that doesn't have fins and scales, you can't eat. What things that come out the waters do our people like to eat that doesn't have fins and scales? Catfish. What about shrimp? That's, that's good. The Lord made you allergic for a reason. Right. It's, hey, that's the spirit. Right. But shrimp, scallops, crawfish, yeah, you know, uh, lobsters, right. all of these things are abominations. You have to eat fish with fins and scales. Right. Perch, cod, right. whitefish, right. red snapper, salmon, those are clean fish. Okay, the brother said tuna. He loved tuna. Right? But guess what? We can't eat the things that don't have fins and scales. You understand that? Those are two. I'm going to give you one more. Leviticus chapter 20, 19. Uh, wow. What have you, 19 and 28? So book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Bring it out. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Right. Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So the Lord said, you have tattoos? All right, the Lord said we can't have any tattoos because you can't mark up our body. Now we have tattoos, but the Lord said we got to repent from that and not do it again. Right. Right? I got we, we can dialogue after this. We just got to teach this brother real quick. Right? So we have to understand that. So now go back, go to read verse 20, that was 28? That was 28. Read verse 27. Verse 27. Ye yeah. shall not round the corners of your head. You ever seen Tyrese Gibson? Bald? Yeah, the bald dude. He's not bald. He has hair on his head. He's not bald? Tyrese Gibson, the one that be crying a lot on them talk shows. Baby boy. Yeah, that's what you do. No, you good. So Michael Jordan. <laughs> You can't shave your head completely bald. You have to have some type of hair on your head. Just like this brother, just like that brother down there if he fully examined the matter. Right. And just like these other brothers right here. Right. But you can't be completely bald because that goes back to the Egyptian custom, or Egyptian custom because we just came out of Egypt. Right. We're worshiping a sun god. That's what they believe. But the Lord has hair on his head, Daniel 7 and 9. Right? Read on. You shall not round the corners of your heads. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. And we can't shave off our beards. Brothers just trying to grow beards. Right. But if you can grow a beard, you got to have a beard on your face. You can line it up, trim if you need to. Right. But you have to have a beard. It's a badge of manly honor. You understand that? Now, those are some commandments that we have to keep. I'm going to give you a flyer. Brothers got a flyer? Come on. The starter pack you came in at? Give my brother a flyer and give him a starter pack. Well, he, got a, he already got a flyer. Give him a starter pack. Oh, hey, Obi, Obi. Come on. Look into that, King. You're an Israelite. Right. What's going on, boss? Oh, what up? What's your name? Go I'm Zah. Huh? I'm Zah. Zah? Yeah, what's your name? Uh, you using the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, yeah, yeah. That was you? I believe so. Was that you talking that time? Nah, that wasn't me talking. Oh, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. What's your name? My name is Marjani. Not, nice to meet you, Marjani. All right, so you brought out the Deuteronomy about swine, right? That King. Was that, was that always how it was? What do you mean? What you, that? Do you take the position that that was always, that law was always in effect? Yes. Okay, can you go to Genesis 9? Genesis so you 9. Can start Wait, hold on, hold on. Do you have a Bible? I don't got a fist bone. I got you a have an arm? Yeah, you can use your phone. I want you to read. Because this is your, 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 your claim, your cause. Right. I just say Genesis 9, verse 3. 
Uh, actually, I'm gonna start at verse two. It says, "They are." Hold on, I'm gonna start at verse two. My fault. It says, "Every moving thing that lives shall be for food to, for you. I have given you all things, even as the green earth." So this is talking. This is this is to Noah. So before Moses came. <laughs> Noah was able to eat every living thing. You just couldn't eat the blood of it. So the dietary restrictions that was given on Sinai and then reiterated in Deuteronomy, that was specifically for the Israel, for Israel up until the time of Christ came and said. That was specifically for the Itlo, the descendants of Jacob at the time, the Israelites that came Israelites. out of Egypt. Okay, yeah. but the sons of God from the patriarchal lineage from Adam all the way down to Noah, it wasn't from them. It wasn't for them, as you were saying. No. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll add, because that sounds like it makes sense. Now, I will ask you this. When you read two chapters before, remember Noah's about to get on the ark. It's about to start raining. Five months in the ark, 150 days, the waters prevailed. We're going to see Genesis 7 and 2, and we're going to read about some directions that God gave Noah. And it's going to make me ask, did Noah no, know certain things? No, hold on, hold on. Let me, I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk. Let me, let me, let me answer. It's the book of Genesis chapter 7 and verse number 2. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. Right. And of the beasts that are not clean. You know what? And of the beasts that are not clean. By two, the male and his female. Right. Of fowls, also of the air, by sevens. And the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. So now before you say something, he had clean and unclean beasts. Obviously more clean beasts for sacrifices to God because the Lord doesn't want unclean beasts being sacrificed to him. And they have to eat as well. Now I'm going to show you with the, another Bible verse proving that the unclean, unclean beast is swine. I'm going to show you. Now hold on. I'm going to let you talk. All right, let me prove my point. We're going to Acts 10 and 10. Let me show you this. This is the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 10. Bring it out. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Right, this is talking about Peter. Peter, yeah. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Right. Where it were all manner of four-footed beasts. Four-footed beasts. You know what? Beasts of the earth. Beasts of the earth. And wild beasts. Right. And creeping things creeping and fowls of the air. Creeping things, fowls of the air, read on. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, right. for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. That is what? That, that is, is common, common or unclean. unclean. And what is that thing that was common or unclean of the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth? I mean, there could have been many animals. Would it you say pig is one? Yeah. Exactly. But it don't, it don't, it don't, direct, it don't directly say what So in Genesis chapter yeah. 7, what was, the, what was those unclean animals? It was the same one that, uh, that was written in the, uh, Sinai, right, like right. Yeah. And Noah was righteous, right? Yeah. So Noah ate pork on the ark? Yeah. Prove because that Noah ate pork on the ark. Prove that he did it because uh, you got you to gotta remember that Genesis is written by Moses. So Moses, everything before his story is recounting what happened prior. So Moses is going to use, he's going to use information that the Israelites will understand during that time. They kept the so, commandments from the time on, of Adam. So Moses, when he writes this, when he's recounting what happened from Adam all the way down up until his time, he's going to use language that the Israelites understood. At that time, Moses already received the law, so the Israelites understood what clean and unclean was. That's why he made the, that's why he said. But Noah didn't understand what clean and unclean was? What do you, mean? you said the you said the Israelites understood now what unclean and clean was because of Moses. Yeah. So did Noah understand the concept of clean and unclean? Because we read that he already did. So why would he eat an unclean animal and then later on in, uh, but, but Moses says now these are unclean you can't eat. They never told Noah he couldn't eat any unclean. So does God change? Of course not. So if he doesn't change, wouldn't Noah knew what unclean was if clean unclean was always pigs and, un and unclean animals? Do you know what progressive revelation is? Is that in the Bible? Progressive Revelation? Yeah. So Is that word in the Bible? Is Hebrew Israelite the term in the Bible? The Israel, yeah, Hebrew and Israelite Hebrew is in the and Bible. Israelite as separate terms are, but the term Hebrew Israelite as a conjunction is not in the Bible. Hebrew is a language and not Israelite Hebrew. is an ethnicity. But Hebrew Those two Israel. words are found in the Bible. I didn't say the two words. I it's said the same word. One word. It's a term. Hebrew Israelite, that word, that term is not in the Bible. So that's a that's a fallacy. You can't say, oh, it's not in the Bible, so it doesn't exist. All right, go to Exodus chapter 5 and verse 3. Go to Romans chapter 11, oh, verse what? 1. Hold on, one hold on. I'm about to make one thing. All right. 
I believe in Exodus, when the Lord gives his name, he said, I am the, um, paraphrase, he said, I am the Lord whose name your fathers did not know. But when you go read with Abraham, you see the Tetragrammaton at, at shown in there. But later in the in, in Exodus, Exodus, I believe, it says, your fathers did not know me by this name. So that just proves my point that Moses is using language that the Israelites understood. All right, so you made a previous claim before that, that Hebrew and Israelite wasn't in the Bible. I don't want to go from that point just yet. Read this. Exodus 5 and 3. And they said, the God of the Hebrews, the, what? the, the God, God of the, the Hebrews. Hebrews. Okay, so Hebrews in the Bible. Read what you got. It's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 22. Bring it out. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Right. Are they Israelites? Are they what? Are, Are they, they Israelites? Hebrew Israelites not in the Bible. Are they Israelites? Hard to say the same thing as Exodus, so you have been found wrong on that point. Did now, going back to unclean, unclean. Hold on, hold on. Do you, because right. you said I said the word Hebrew and the word Israelite. You said those are not in the, in the Bible. Said, no, I didn't. It's in the same I said it's the, in the same verse. I said I said the term Hebrew Israelite is not in the Bible because it's if we. So what is, what is Paul talking about? Do you believe that Hebrew? Do you believe that Hebrew? Do you believe that um? Do you believe that Adam was an Israelite? He couldn't have been because he exactly. didn't come from Jacob. He was a son of God. But he's a Hebrew, right? He's a son it's of God. Like, no, he's not a Hebrew. You have to come from Eber for to be a Hebrew. Is Abraham a Hebrew? Yes. Okay, is he an Israelite? No. Okay, that's my point. So just because you find the word Hebrew and Israelite does not mean the term is in the, in the Bible. Abraham is a Hebrew, but he's not an Israelite. So just because... That would make no find, sense because, like I you said... You just said he's not an Israelite. How can you be an Israelite if Israelites came out of Jacob? I'm, I'm trying to make my point. I got you. Go ahead. So what you're saying is Hebrew, Israelite, that specific that's term is not in the term. Bible, but we find Hebrew and Israelite in the Bible. I, I'm but the example that. that you're using saying that certain men were, weren't Israelites and certain men were Hebrews has it. nothing to do with the term Hebrew is like being found in the Bible. That's you what said, you're saying. You right. Said, you said something, something I said wasn't in the Bible. Hebrew Pro Israelite. You said progressive revelation is not found in the Bible. So I rebuttal saying the term Hebrew Israelite isn't in the Bible. That was my only point. Then we proved it. Well, it is. No, you didn't prove the term. You proved that the words are in the Bible. I have a question for you. What's up? So going back to an unclean and a clean beast, mm -hmm. and you're saying that progressive revelation that Noah didn't know what unclean and clean beasts were, even though he divided them on an the ark, which I'm kind of having a I'm hard time understanding. I'm not saying he didn't know what unclean and unclean and clean was. Uh -huh. I'm saying the text doesn't necessarily say Noah can eat it. He didn't know if he could eat it or not, what you're saying. No, I didn't say that. I said the text doesn't say that he couldn't or could. Because when you get down, it says he can eat of all food. But it then, when it says all foods, it doesn't make a distinction. But then that would apply that the commandments are not forever, or the commandments weren't here since the time of Noah. Right. You got to prove it was. I, I'm gonna. I'm going to go to Genesis chapter four and start at verse. What you got? Read this. Genesis chapter four and verse number one. Bring it out. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, "I've gotten a man from the Lord." Right. And she began to bear his brother Abel. Right. And Abel was the keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Right. In the process of time, of time it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground right. and offering. And what? And yeah, offering, offering. What? And, and offering. Aren't offerings found in Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that Moses wrote? How did Cain and Abel know to bring offerings to God to atone for their sins? Yeah. If the commandments were here. Does it say it's for him to atone for his sin? It says, for, uh, it says an offering. But does it say to atone for his sin? Where's the offerings given to them for? Because who sinned? Adam, because right? Adam sinned, right? So he was given the coat of skin to make an offering to God, and he taught his own. Adam didn't get, Adam was clothed in his skin. Yeah. Adam, did, Adam didn't. It's the law. Look, Adam, did, Adam didn't provide the sacrifice. When Adam, when God said, how do you know you're naked? God went and made the sacrifice first. Adam didn't make the sacrifice. Prove that. Because where did where where did, the, keep that. where did Adam get the skin from? Because it said, and God clothed him with yeah. with skin. It so you said Adam. You said God said, made the sacrifice. Yes, it said. Why can you prove that? It said God skin. What said that? You saying you keep saying it? Okay, let me find it. I need no. I need you to prove it. Yeah. Because yeah. Because if you can't prove, it, then you have to succeed to the point that the offerings were there since the time of Cain and Abel. Right. In the law that Moses wrote, but how did they know that? You have to answer. How did they know that? I got you. We're gonna we're gonna wait until you prove it. Come on, you go, you go. Genesis chapter four and verse number one. Bring it out. Genesis chapter four and verse number one. 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 Genesis chapter four and ver
it's, it was said and what was said. Right. We're trying to figure that out. Right. What about me? Okay, Genesis 3, 21. Okay. It says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. It does not say Adam went and made the sacrifice because it says of skin. So the okay. skin that was used had to be from an animal because it doesn't say anywhere else where they got the, the skin. So my point is, how so did it, how did Cain and Abel know to make sacrifices if Abel did Abel didn't know? I didn't say he didn't know. So how did Cain it and Abel know offering. to keep the? It says offering. How did exactly? How did they but know it, to do it that? It doesn't say sacrifice. How did they know? To, it doesn't. It says offering. That's. I'm just going off what it says. Okay. It says it's offerings in the law. Of course. So how did they know to do an offering if it's not if the law was here yet? Because the Lord told them to. That doesn't mean the law is there. The law came and signed. Wait, wait. Didn't the Lord tell Moses to tell the children of Israel to keep the law and the offerings? So isn't it the same thing the Lord told them to? Yeah. So they knew the commandments. He told them at Sinai. So he, yeah. So he knew the commandments. He told Moses at Sinai. What about Cain and Abel? Did he tell them? Find me in a text where it says he told them. How did they know? Find me in a text where you find the law. No, I'm asking you a question. How did because they know the that? Because the Lord spoke it to them. So the Lord taught them how to do sacrifices and offerings. It doesn't say sacrifice. So he, you he read a passage that said offering. So so he to, he told them how to do offerings. That's a commandment. Yes. So they knew the commandments. That's not all the commandments. And there we have it. Don't you, oh, read on. Don't you believe it's it? Read it. Uh, read it on. We're gonna get another one. Maybe it's a little bit more clear. Right. Verse number four, and it reads. And Abel, he also brought of the first fruits of the flock of the fat thereof. Right. And the Lord had respect unto Abel, unto his offering. Read on. But unto Cain, unto his offering, he had no respect. He had no what? He, he had, had no respect. Why would God get mad at Cain and not have respect to his offering if he didn't teach them about the offerings yet? And he told them. Offering. That's what I just said, offering. Why would he not have respect to it? The fight that you said a sacrifice. Why is he? I'm that talking about offerings. Offering. Oh, wait, offerings in the law. That text is offering. Is it in the law? Yes. Okay, so why like was I God said, mad? Like I, why was he mad? At Cain if he didn't teach them about the offerings. You gotta read on. And read on. Verse 5. But unto Cain. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, What the rough? And why is thou counting his father? Oh, he's asking him, Cain, why are you mad? Because he wouldn't be asking him this if he already knew. Read one back. Can you read it one more time? My bad. Read it one more time. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou what? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? I mean, if he does well, wouldn't he have been accepted? But Cain would have to already know what well was, right? That, to me, and that, can you read the To you? Hold on. Can you read the book verse again? Huh? Read it again. Read it. I'm having a hard time understanding it. Why would God be mad at Cain and Cain get mad? He says, well, why are you mad? If you did well, you've been accepted. But I thought Cain never knew to do well. Right. The commandment wasn't here yet. Right. You have to prove that. Can you read, can you read the verse? Let's read it one more time. Verse If thou do as well, shall... Verse four. Verse four. And Abel... He also brought of the first lead of his flock. Right, the first lead of his flock. And of the feather of. Which you said was in the law. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Right. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very rough, and his countenance failed. He was very what? Say on the top. He was rough. Rough. Mad. Mad. Rough. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou rough? And why is thou counting as fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Now, why would God ask that question if Cain didn't know about the commandment of the offerings or the first thing of the flock? I didn't, this, when you say the commandments, you're speaking, let me, actually, let me clarify. When you say commandments, are you speaking about six, all the 613? The law, statutes, and commandments. So all 613. I'm talking about specifically this offering. This that was found in Leviticus. Why is he mad if Cain didn't know that? Like I said, Moses is writing this. So Moses is using language that the Israelites understand. And when you read that text, it makes a distinction on why God did not accept the offering. Okay. Because it says Cain, my fault, is it Abel? I don't know, is it? Cain, Cain um, What's your point? he offered his first of his flock. Abel didn't. It doesn't say Abel did that. Doesn't. It, it said Cain offered his first. 
You're supposed to give your first to God. But how would he know that though if the commandments and the law wasn't here yet? That's my question. What you mean how? You just said the, your point is the law is not here yet because Moses gave it during Mount Sinai. Right. So why would he know? Why would God be mad at Cain if Cain didn't know right. what to offer the to the Most can, High? Right. The Lord, can, the Lord can tell you certain things that wasn't directly in the commandments that became a commandment later is, on. If the Lord tells you something to do something, is that a commandment? But is, uh. that, the commandment? is that the Mosaic law? That's what we're speaking about. Yeah, you see, you're trying to say it's two different things when it's the same it, offering found in the Is it the Mosaic law? Thing. Yes, it's part of the, yes, it is. This, this, was that, was the, the Mosaic, Mosaic law is God's laws. Right. Right. So if God has given a commandment to do something, is that all? law? Was the Mosaic law there first? That, that's what you believe. Mosaic law is God's law. It's not, Mo Moses didn't write this himself. Okay. Right. It came from the finger of God. Okay. Right. So didn't this come from the mouth of God as well? Okay, let me ask you a I'm asking you. Okay, what's you have to answer my question. Of course. You said, so, so of course what? That it came from the mouth of God. Right. So it, doesn't that make that a law or a commandment? Or why would God be mad at Cain? It gave him an instruction. Exactly. Isn't the right. law's instruction? Okay. So but the laws make, was here before it was Moses. Right. That's make, the point. Right. Oh, that doesn't make you it just the fell on your own no. sword. That doesn't make it the Mosaic law. That's the Mosaic law is God's law. For it real? doesn't make it the Mosaic law. Go to Exodus 31 wait, wait, in the last wait. verse. Nah. I have to show you that God. Wait, wait, wait. But you're making a point that Mosaic wait, laws, wait, if it differs God's laws, that makes no sense. Let me make one. Let me ask you one question before you get there. So are you saying the laws that Christ gave? Are those the ones that you got it. It's the law right. That's the law right here. It's the law right here. The law in Genesis chapter four. This is the law right here. Numbers eighteen and seventeen. But the first thing, huh? Yeah, this is the law that he kept in Genesis. This is the same law that you found in the Mosaic law. Okay. But the first thing of a cow, or the first thing of a sheep, or the first thing of a goat. Thou shalt not redeem, they are holy, but thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shalt burn their fat for an offering. For what? For, for an, an offering. In Genesis? For, for an, an offering. offering. Made by fire for a sweet savior unto the Lord. So was that law found in Genesis? Yes, but so so if the laws here during the time of Genesis. I'm not I'm not debating that there was not a law that those people at that time knew to follow because they was to, they was to listen to God. But what I you saying, said that it was found in Genesis because Moses wrote that. The Mosaic law. The Mosaic law is the same it law. The same. Another question. That Mosaic law that's found in Numbers is that also found in Genesis? Yes. So that's, does that make that a Mosaic law in Genesis? It makes it the Mosaic law. Progressive revelation when it came down to Moses. He proved that. What you mean? Prove what you just said. Moses got the law of Sinai. All right, so prove that was progressive revelation that had to happen, and it's not the same. Who's the author of the first five? Prove that. Who's the author of the first five? I mean the first five. Who's the author of the Torah? Moses wrote that. It, okay, but, then. That's, but that's my point. But that doesn't show Moses that the Moses using language that the that doesn't language show that the law wasn't here since Genesis. Yes, it does. You, I'm not saying there was no law. There was, but as soon as Adam was created, so you move all over the place. No, I'm not. I said there's not the Mosaic law. I never said there was no law because the only, the real only law, first commandments was do not eat of the fruit that is in the midst of the tree. That was the first commandment, was it not? Okay, wasn't there commandments after that? Yes, but that's not the Mosaic law. What's that's, the difference between the Mosaic the law and the laws found in here? The Mosaic law was given to Moses on Sinai. So, it was, so that makes it the Mosaic law, even though it was given from God to Moses to the children of Israel. Yes, because it was given to Mo God gave it to Moses on Sinai for the children of Israel. That's the point I make. I also have a question. So if that was given to Moses, it makes it the Mosaic law. And yes. these laws in Genesis was given to Cain and Abel. Does that make it the Cain and Abel law? Right. right. Was it just only given to Cain and Abel because it was happened before? That's why you have an Abrahamic covenant. So it's so an Abraham law too? You have it's an Adam law too? You have an Abrahamic covenant? An Eve law too? Right. So that makes no sense. Right. That makes no sense. So it's the Zahabayala law? There's the Tazama law? Right. Just because it was given to a specific person it's to teach people, that doesn't, make it the, that doesn't make it the Mosaic law. Yes, right. If it's the same laws of God. That right. is, that's what you're saying it's the Abel law. It's I the never, Cain law. I never said that. It was given to them, right? I never said that's that. That's the same point you're making. I said God gave them instruction. Right. But God gave the Wasn't law. Wasn't that a law though? God gave the law to Moses on Sinai. But we're going to keep going in circles. I mean, but you're not understanding what you're saying. It's cool. We're going to keep going in circles. But I was talking to Keon. We're supposed to have a conversation. I want to know if because we're supposed to get to Isaiah 42 or 49. Remember? I think that's it. How long are y'all going to be here? I mean, how long do you want to, I mean, keep getting cut? I mean, it's, it's up to you. You say I'm getting cut. <laughs> so, you want to go to Isaiah 42? Wait, matter of fact, do y'all believe this? Do you? Because I'm speaking to you. 
You believe in Isaiah 42 and 49 that they're serving this woman? So are you abandoning the point that the law is found in Genesis? I just said we're going to keep going to serve. No, I'm asking, do you abandon that? I just said we're going to keep going to serve. So is that a yes? Why are we going to keep going to serve? Oh, he wants to abandon it. What Isaiah chapter 42? You no, you didn't ask my question. What's your question? Do you believe that they're serving is, uh, who do you believe they're serving is, the 42 and 49? I don't I have to read that. Okay. So I'm going to read it. Because I don't want to, you good, you good. I don't want to bring up a point if we agree on it. Are you good? Book of Isaiah. 40, you go, no, 42, 42, chapter 42 and chapter 49. Oh, yeah, so Isaiah chapter 42 and then Isaiah chapter 49. Yeah, so it's speaking of, of the service. So I'm asking in those two, in those two chapters, do you, who do you think, the, who do you believe the servant to be? Read it. Isaiah 42 and 1. Bring it out. No. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mighty legs, and whom I so delighted, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Right. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto the truth. Right. Unto truth. Reading on. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged till he have set judgment on the earth. And the ice shall wait for his law. This said the Lord. This said God the Lord. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth. And he that which cometh out of it. He that giveth birth unto the people upon it. And spirit to them that walk therein. So that's the servant that you're talking about? Yeah. Who do you say that is? I'm asking you. I say that's the Lord. The Lord. Lord. Yahweh Shai. God's, God's son. Yes, yeah, I was shot. Okay, what about 49? Because we agree that's what Lord is none of the Okay. What about 49? I'll read that. I'm asking because when I asked you, you said it wasn't. No, it is. So it's. 49 is still good? Okay, so we ain't got an argument. When I was speaking, I mean, he said. Okay. I was working. Yeah, I was working. Alright, so I'm asking you the same question I brought to him. You gonna pull up Zachariah 12? You pull up Zachariah 12. I mean, y'all got the mic. That's what I'm asking. I know, but you got a Bible too. You know, we got to prove our claims. I didn't make claims. I never made claims. All right. You want a book, bro? Yeah, you want it? You want my Bible? You want my Bible? I ain't gonna find it up, bro. All right, so Zechariah 12, verse 1. The burden of the water, word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord. Who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Right. Who's the who's the uh, spirit? I'm not, you said who's the spirit? Who's the speaker? Read it again. Who's the speaker? The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord. Who's the Lord is the speaker. The Most High. You wait. You said thus saith the Lord. The Most High. Right. The Most High. Right, brother. Yes. No. I, I just want to make sure. I say, yeah, like four times. Yeah, yeah. Really my I'm going to jump down to verse 10. It says, And I will pour out the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. Then they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. So the speaker never changes. Well, you can say the speaker never changes, but when you read in certain chapters in the Bible, the context can change. But the speaker doesn't. If the context can change, the speaker can change. The speaker, you can pull it up. So you don't got to take my word. What? Pull up what? Zechariah. Pull up Zechariah chapter 12. Let's read it. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1. Oh. Yeah. The burden of the word of the Lord of Israel saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens, and lay the foundation of the earth and form of the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make... Now you see in your text, when it says, after thus says the Lord, it has a quotation, right? When it gets to behold, it has quotation marks. So the author, who is Zechariah, is quoting the Lord. It's not even there. It's not the quotation? Where do you see that at? Quotation marks? Yeah, where do you see that? There's no quotation marks? Behold... Okay, so it don't show anything. But right. I'm in an anchor. You see, you got quotation marks because it's quoting what the Lord is saying. You, you, follow, you follow me? 
That's not the King James version. Though. This is the New King James. Okay. Is your only authority the King James? We yeah we, uh, we use the other translations. I understand if y'all like the King James more, but I'm asking is your only authority the King James? Yes. Your we, only authority. We subscribe strictly off the King James. So you, so you don't use any other translation. We do. And that's what I'm saying. That's you, what I'm saying. Yeah, let me explain. We use comparative texts to show different verses, you know, okay, in the so Bible. The new, but we go strictly off the King James when the, it comes to doctrinal points. The New King James is literally the same manuscript that's used in the King James. So it's the same. T they're using the same manuscript. This is the same manuscript tradition. So the same manuscript they use to form this Bible is the same manuscript they use for the New King James. Right. And so what's your, your point on the quotation? What's your point? That, that's showing that that's the Lord speaking. Well, you follow me? Okay, I understand. I'm, okay. I'm understanding your um, apostle. Yeah. So when it gets to verse 10, again, it has quotation marks because it's quoting what the Lord said. Now the Lord, who you said was the speaker, is the Most High, said that they will look... They will look on me whom they pierced. So my question is, when did they pierce the most high? That's my only question. God can't be pierced. Okay, but the text just said they pierced the most high. Well, that's why we read upon precept upon precept. Go to Acts we, chapter 3 and 21. Go to the book of John chapter 12 and verse number 45. Can we stay here real quick? Well, we have to get precept upon precept. Okay, but can we stay here real quick? Well, we have to prove our point. I'm about, okay, but can you can you address it in Zechariah? We are about to address it. I'm We're saying, about to address it right now. I'm saying, can you address it in Zechariah? We're about to address Zechariah right now. Can you address Zechariah in the context of Zechariah and then pull your other scriptures that you want to... The you know, other scriptures have to point. validate my point that's in Zechariah. That's why I'm asking, can you stand Zechariah to prove your point, then go to your other scriptures and sub substantiate your point? No. You can't? So no, I don't I don't I don't want to do it that way. You, you can't you can't tell me how I'm to argue the point. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. No, so I'm not. You don't do want to stay in Zechariah. No, we're about to go back to Zechariah. No, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm asking. You don't want to stay in Zechariah to, to So you want me to pull another verse in Zechariah 12 no, to show I, Zechariah 12. I want you to use the concept of Zechariah to, to explain who said that. So I'm gonna ask you a question. What is a testimony? A testimony? You tell me. A testimony is a witness. Okay. Right, because there are certain men that witness certain things in different time periods of the Bible, and there are certain men that's going to prophesize different things, and other men that's going to come to validate these prophecies. So he said, they looked upon me whom they have pierced. Now, let's go to John chapter 12, verse 45, to show that God hasn't been pierced, because we're going to show you through his son. Read this, John 12, and verse 45. It's the book of John chapter 12 and 45. And he that said to me, seeth him that said me, I am come, I am I am come in light. Verse 44. Yep. It says, He that seeth me. He that seeth me. Seeth him that sent me. Seeth what? Seeth him that sent me. Christ comes into the representation of the Father. So the Father was never pierced, but who was pierced? Christ was pierced. So I would say that was a prophecy about Christ being pierced. I just, and, no. then I'm, and then I'm going to show you another verse no, to show I'm, you this. Acts 3 21. Let me, I got you. I Let ask, me read I this verse. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 21. Help. From the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets right. since the world began. Since the what? Since the, the world, world began. Verse 18. Verse 18. But those things which God before had shewn by the mouth of all his prophets. By the mouth of all his prophets. Because was it really God saying that or was it spoken through the prophet Zechariah? Because I can say, well, it's really Zechariah because it came out of his lips. But if we really want to be spiritual, we're understanding that these things are to come. Before, read on. That Christ, that who? That Christ should, what? should suffer. So being pierced, should suffer. Right? He has so fulfilled. So Christ fulfilled that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not right. disagreeing. So, uh, but you're asking well, when was God pierced? God was never pierced, but Christ was. And I can show you that. that that's my, that's the point I'm making. Right. Because Christ is the Most High. No, no, He's not the Most High. Christ is most definitely the Most High. How? What you mean how? All right, let's go to Micah chapter. What you, you say? Micah chapter five. Micah three one. Oh yeah, yeah, Psalms 22. We already went over this, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already went over this. Psalms 22 and 16. It says, For dogs have compassed me, right. the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. I'm asking you a question. They pierced my hands and my feet. They what? They, they pierced, pierced my, my hands, hands and, and my feet. feet. Is, is David Christ? No. Is David God? No. So why did David say that if he's the author? So what was Zachariah doing? He was quoting the Lord. But he said, Thus says the Lord. He's speaking prophetically. Of course, but he was quoting about the Lord. Christ, right? He was speaking prophetically. So is David about what was going to happen, what the Most High said will happen to him. Right. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a cut. It's not a because cut. Because if God gave that prophecy to David, 
Hold on. I understand. And God gave that prophecy to David, right? right. And David said they pierced my hands and my feet. Is God David? Is David God? No. But you're saying that's the same account as Zechariah the 12th chapter. I said, I said That's exactly. the same point that you're making. No, it's not. I said. So in Psalms 22 and Zechariah the 12th chapter, is that the same concept? Yes. So he just said, David said that. David said it. And David was speaking in the first person, right? Uh, yes. So did, did, about Christ. So was that did that happen to David? No. So does he get apply that with Zechariah 12? Zechariah wasn't speaking at first. Person. But the most high was speaking, but like he said, it's both prophetic. prophetic. It's prophetic. But so if it's point. prophetic, the Lord and he us? just pulled, hold on, if it's prophetic and he just pulled out the most high can't be Christ because we just he proved that. He just said to John, John the 14th chapter, verse 45. He didn't prove that. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Amen. Right. Sent me. Amen. If I send you to go to the Amen. store, am I actually you going to the store? Uh -huh. Saint. Are you God? Is God like anything in his creation? No. So you cannot compare what happens in man. God is not like anybody in his he's creation. Any, go to not. Genesis 1 and 26. Man was, he, man, Are you sure image? he's not like but is, anything? Say that again. Made in my image. No, there no. Is, say, say what you just said there again. There is no being. There is no being that is like God. Uh, no God. being. Like God in his creation. That's what you say. Right. Let's see God's creation. I got a preacher. This Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't run through the Genesis chapter 1 and 26. Yes, made in my image. Yes. And God said, let us make man in our image. In our what? In our image. In our image. And in our likeness. And in our likeness. Like anything in creation. And in our likeness. And in our likeness. And in our likeness. And in our likeness. Hold on. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Just like how God has dominion over the earth. Right. You said God is a being? What does the word being mean? Did you say God is a being? That's my question. Because Did you say God is a being? I don't want it to be a misunderstanding of what I mean What's, by what being. What is a being? What is, the, the, your state of existence. John 4 24. Do you agree with that? God is a spirit. He's a what? That's God, God is a spirit, spirit, not a being. That's his state of existence. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's bad. My this point. is bad. Hold on, hold on. So we are created in his likeness, can I, can I, according to the Bible. Can, I address that? can you address what we just said? I, you can see to that point. I'm going to. I'm going to address that. You said he's not a being. Him being a spirit is his state of existence. That's what the word being means. Do you exist? Yes, my, are you a spirit? My state of existence is man. Are you a spirit? spirit? Hold on, hold on, my hold on. Because you've been taking him somewhere. I'm trying to keep him where he needs to be. So you just said, hold on, before that, that God is not like anybody's creation. To stand from the point that David is different, what David is saying is different from Zechariah, because Zechariah says, thus saith the Lord, didn't happen to Christ. David was speaking in first person that also happened to Christ. So is Christ King David? No. So is the Most High Christ, if they're saying the same thing? It's not saying the same thing. It's that's the same what, concept. That's you, what we're disagreeing. You just said no, that piercing I, my I hands and feet. It's on 4K. You said I, that. I said Literally. You can rewind it. I said it's the same prophecy. Same prophecy. It's the same prophecy. So it's the same concept. No, that's what you're twisting oh. my words. It's the same prophecy. David is speaking in first person about the Messiah. And was it, God speaking in first person about the Messiah? God was speaking about himself. How? Because it says, they, it says, thus says the Lord, then it says, they will look on me, me, whom they have pierced. And didn't David me. say they're going to pierce my, my, but my, it, my hands and feet? What does Zechariah mean? What does Right. Zechariah says, what thus says mean? the Lord. And didn't King David say, I? Yeah, so that he's in first person. Cut. So it's both first person, Cut. both talking about Who's a prophecy, but in one prophecy, they have to be the same, but in the next prophecy, they have to be different. That's blasphemy. You can't do that. You can't make that point. It makes no sense. No. It has to, it, I can make it has that to line up. I can make that point because we can look in the scriptures. It has to be parallel. Okay. We can, I can make that point because I can look in the scripture and find that that didn't happen to David and that happened to the Messiah. Right. That's why I can now, make that point. Now, find in the Bible what happened to the Most High God. When he was on Calvary. When he was on what? Calvary. He was on Calvary, and that's when they, and that's when they pierced God's hands and feet. Yes. So I can say that's when they pierced David's hands and feet. No, you can't. Why? When did it happen? The same time you're saying that God was pierced. You're God saying that care. happened on Calvary. Yes. I'm saying King David happened on Calvary because it's the same prophecy. When they were both speaking of uh, first but, person. Right. Do you no. see your argument? Do you see it's my, not good. Do you see my argument? What I'm saying is, you're, do you see my argument? I understand what you're saying. Okay, what's my argument? But it's not parallel to Psalms 22. Okay, can you, can you, what's Come. my argument? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's my argument? Your argument is this, since it says, thus saith the, just so we're all clear. Wait, hold, exactly wait, right in 12 wait, 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 let me let me clarify. Do you think I believe that Jesus is the Father? 
you just said that God in Christ or God was pierced on Calvary when Christ okay, was pierced. Okay, but do you, do you think I believe that's that? That's what you're God, saying. No, it's not. That's, that's what you're Jesus. saying. No, it's not. So what are you saying? I don't believe Jesus. Let me not, let me not misconstrue you. Yeah, what are you saying? saying? I do not believe what? Jesus is the Father. So what's, what's the point? Of, crazy. I don't understand this. Crazy. So why Jesus. would you bring up the point of Zechariah chapter 12? Because he's that's my, do you know what the Trinity is? Yes, we know what's what the Trinity is. Can you explain the Trinity to me? There are multiple levels of Trinity. Just the base. But the basis concept of Trinity is that the God, Holy Spirit, and Christ is all the same being. That the Most High God Okay. Christ and the Holy Spirit are one in three of the same beings. They're, They're the not same. different beings. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. These three entities are one being. They're not different entities. Different entities subject a different being. They're not different. That's entities. why I said there's multiple concepts in Trinita a Trinitarian because in the modalism, base, they believe that they're modalism, three different. Modalism, modalism, they believe that Jesus is the finish. Father and the Spirit. You asked me a question. I'm trying to answer the question. Okay, but I want you to make sure you, you're representing what I believe correctly. I mean, you just asked me to ask. You asked me to kind of okay, say no, what you I'm believe. But I don't really know, so I'm, I'm trying to. You, got, you said, "What is the definition of Trinity?" I'm just going to give you the definition of Trinity. That's what I'm correct. I'm not saying you believe in them. That's what I'm correct. Right. I don't believe that there are three different entities okay. or three different beings. Okay. I do not believe that. All right. Because that would completely. So what do you believe in? That the one being of God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is Yahweh. Y'all say Yahweh. That's the Trinity, right? Yes. Okay. Can they at any time be separate? They're not separate. They're distinct. Can at any time they be separate? No, they're distinct. Okay. So, no, it's not. They're distinct. Get the get the definition. Pull up the theological definition, though. Don't use a regular definition. Pull up the theological definition. Because I believe that the, that God is three distinct, distinct recognizably different yes. in nature from something else or a similar type. They're, so you're recognizably different from different that's things. That's why I just asked. So you, distinct and separate two different why, things. That's why I just asked you. Can you pull up the theological definition? Up. Because Christ, you can distinctly see that He's not the Father in Scripture, and you can distinctly see that He's not the Spirit in the Scripture. Right. So there's so three this no, there's you three this Christ says he does nothing, he does nothing out of his own accord. Everything he does is in line with the Father. So they're not separate. All right. Everything Christ does. Go to Isaiah 40, 26, go to John 14 and 20, uh, John 14 and 26. Isaiah 40, 26. I want you, I want to read something real, real quick to you. I want you to answer this. Because now, okay, like I said, what you're saying could probably make sense. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm saying it has to line up with the totality of the Bible. So when I read these two scriptures, I sometimes get confused with Trinitarianism. No, that's cool. So I want to add, you're a Trinitarian, you believe in this, so help me understand where you're coming from with these two points, okay? I'm going to ask what you. What scriptures are you? These two scriptures which, right here. Which one? I'm going to read it. Read this. Which scripture? John chapter 14 and verse number 26. Yeah. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, yes. whom the Father, we'll send whom, in my name. whom the Father will send Sin in my name, Amen. he shall teach you all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever I have said unto you, Amen. peace I leave with you, right. my peace I give unto you, right. Amen. not as the world giveth, but give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let there be afraid. Yet, so ye have heard now, I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. How can he be the same as the Father if he's going to God? I just said they're distinct persons. Distinct means to be recognizably different. That's the regular, that's why I All right, so prove your definition. I'm going to go off this definition so you can prove it different. Distinct? I have to go off a definition, so I'm going to go off that one so you prove your different definition. No, I don't believe you. I want to see a theological definition. Because if you if you if you may believe you, I need your PhDs, I need your master degrees, I need you to show you your theological definition. No, so I went to somebody that does. So you have to prove your theological definition. If you don't, I have to concede to the first definition, which means recognizably different. So when I say I go into the Father, distinct means recognizably different. That Christ went to the Father, which is different from him. Wait, 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 that you said they're distinctly recognizable. I do not disagree with that. They are distinctly recognizable. You can distinctly say, you can distinctly. Distinctly recognizable? That's what you just said. What does that mean? 
You can distinctly see it's No, I said distinct means to be recognizably different, not distinctly yes, you can, recognizable. You can recognizably you can recognizably see that they're different persons. Yes. Right. So that was that's what distinct means. That's that's separate. Recon, yes, you can recognize that's set apart. Hold on. You can recognizably see that they're different persons. They're not a different being. That's my argument. That makes no sense. They're the same being, three question. different persons. Now let me ask you a question. I have a question. I have a question for you. Just kind of make it make sense to make it practical. Do you come from your father and mother? Of course. Are you recognizably different from them? But that's what I'm saying. I'm at, hold on, answer but my yes, question. Yes. Follow my line of logic. Mm -hmm. You're recognizably different from them? Yes. Like they said that's that's him and that's his mom, fa father and mother. Are you the same as your father and mother? Like are you there? Are you the same as them? I'm the same in human nature, yes. But we're just we're different persons. So that means everybody not, in the earth no. that we're human nature, we're, we're still the same being? We're the same being of human new humankind, yes. And that's Trinitarianism. That's the definition of Trinitarianism, where all human nature is the same. That, all humans are man. Mankind. Because this makes no sense. No, hold on. All Wow. Yes, all humans are mankind. If you go to Genesis 5. Alright, so this is the theological hold definition on. of distinct. Hold on. Read this. Hold on. This is this this is the etymology of the word distinct from the late 1400 CE. It says also clearly, it says uh, also clearly perceptical by sense has particle, going to the point, it says to distinguish one thing from another. Do what? To distinguish one, one thing, thing from, from another. another. Make distinct. Make what? Make, Make distinct. distinct. You're separate, doesn't, it can't doesn't you just say separate. You just, like, read. That's what, he stopped. To separate between. No, say separate. To separate, separate between. between. Separate. To, separate between. Wow. to keep separate. To keep what? Well, to, to keep separate. separate. Theological definition. To, to keep, keep separate. separate. Wow. To, to keep separate. separate. Wow. To to keep separate. separate. Wow. Stop. Wow. Stop. Wow. Stop. Is that to just distinct and separate the same thing? Yeah, let me see. Hold on. No, no, no. Let me see. I'm not saying you're not. Etymology definition. I'm not saying he's lying about what he's reading. So I'm saying, I'm asking you a question. Is separate and distinct the same thing? Not in my definition, no. What is your definition? What you mean? So you're going to have to pull out random definitions? You're going to be making anything up. That's like me going to court and says I'm not a murderer. By the way, I'm not a murderer. Hold on. 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 They're to you or to your definition? They're distinct persons. Prove it. What you, Jesus is not. What definition, definition is that? Definition. Can you read your definition? Can I stand on your definition's claim? Even if I give you my definition, it's not. It's not it doesn't make sense. Let, let, let me see it. Let me read it. We already proved this stuff. Where's your proof? Proof that, man. Bring it out. It says a person is an. No, no, no. Read the source. Okay. Go. Once you typed it in your notes somewhere, man. I don't, and we gotta know these things, man. Type it in my notes. I don't just come up. I told. I you told said it's your definition. I Meaning you came up with it. No, I didn't come up with it. Let me find. Alright, why are you proving that? Go to John fourteen twenty. I'm. Oh, no, is this wait. a question I had? Wait, because I don't want to. I don't want to be trying right, to focus right. on this and not listen. Alright, this is the last one. We gotta wrap up. I understand that, but I don't want. I don't want you to read that and then not just completely. Be I got you. We, we need. To, we need to see your definition, where it came from, the source, who wrote it, why he wrote it, what time period. We need to see these things. We brought out two definitions that said the same thing. The etymology. The etymology, meaning the study of words. If you didn't know. The origin. The origin. Ooh, man, it's getting hot, man. In the lion's den. We gotta see these things. We gotta prove these things. Right. We got ten seconds, man, because we know we. we quick, give me a, can we quick on? Come on, we gotta prove the claim. We gotta prove the evidence, man. But if I, you said you wanna see the, the yeah. The source. That's what I'm telling you. We don't got all source. day, man. That's cool, but you said you wanna see the source. I can give you the definition of. of no, what no, I, we need to see the source. That's of the why I'm trying to find it. All right. Because I can give you what I mean by what I mean. Are you Google searching it? Yes. You going through like the pages? Yeah, I'm looking for us. The, the, yes, I am. You going through the pages? Yes. Brother, we don't got time for you to go through the pages of Google brother. to find your definition. But I gotta get no, all there. No, 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 we gotta be prepared, brother. You just John 14 to 28. Bring it on. Bring it on. Hell, I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice. Because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. For my Father is greater than I. For my father is greater than I. In this 
Oh, and what kind of context? In John 14, he said, my father's greater than I. Because I'll ask you a question. Because like I said, hold on. Because like I said, I want to understand where you're coming from. Okay, can I address that really quick? Hold on, I'm not done with it. Because I'm linking it up with this scripture to make it make sense on what I, why I have this question. Okay. Now, in Isaiah 42 and 6, if he says, my father's greater than I, and then we know that the Lord said this about himself, I have a question about Trinitarianism. Read this. It's Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 6. Yeah. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness right. and will hold thine hand right. and will keep Go to thee. Verse 8. Verse 8. I am the Lord that is my name. That is my name. And my glory. And my what? And my, my glory. glory. Will I what? Will I not give to another? To another? Wait, I will not what? Will I not give to another? So if Christ says my father is greater than I, and God said I would never give my glory unto another, meaning we would not be the same, we would be separate and distinct. Right. How is Trinitarianism going to come along at 325 AD when Constantine came, came, from the, came on the scene came to from. say, okay, now we're going to we're gonna make God and Christ the same thing when these two Bible verses are different. Can you break these Bible verses down? Okay, let me address that, that last claim you made. The Trinity... No, can you address the I, I am. But let me just... The Trinity did not come in 325 at the Council of Nicaea. Let's get that out of the way. Where did it come from? It came from Scripture. Because Keep proving in the, okay, prove these scriptures okay. and link up, link it up okay. with Trinitarianism, with the Trinitarian scriptures. Okay, Trinity. What, what I just said. You just said that the Trinity. People believe who believe the Trinity is that there is three distinct persons, one being. So in that scripture where it says he does not share his glory with another, he is not sharing his glory with another. The, the being of Yahweh is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he's. So not, aren't they sharing the glory with the three brains? It said another, <laughs> right? Another. Speaking in that context, another and, God. And then Christ, and then Lincoln, and then Christ okay. said, I would go into the Father. Right, my father's greater than I. Why is his father greater than him? Because, because he, he didn't him. give his glory no, to another person. No, hold on. Person. The Father is greater than him in this context because he said, I have to go to my Father. Right. So the sense that the Father is greater than him is that he is on earth and the Father is sitting on his throne in heaven. That's the but sense. But they're the same going. thing, though. So why are they in two different places? Right. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's your doctrine. You said how they are in two I'm different places. I'm asking questions about your doctrine. I mean, you said how they are in two different places. Right, because you said they're all the same. They're the same being, yes. Wait, so how are the two different, how is the same being two different places? Oh, it's God. How? So it's more than one more So there's more no, than one God. No. So there's God's many. No. Is that what you're saying? No. So Trinitarian no, believes there's no. God's many. Look, see, right. that's what you just say. No, I didn't. I, he just said, is it really more thing. than one most high? I said no. And with that, Hold say, on, call me a show. 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 Call me a show.